Hello everyone and welcome to a really wild game that was played yesterday uh, in Hikaru Nakamura's stream uh, on chess.com and he plays against none other than Jimmy Donaldson, uh, most of you know him as Mr. Beast and he's one of the most popular channels on YouTube uh, with the videos raging uh, to almost 100 million views, I think, uh, I think maybe one of his videos even has over 100 million views and he's always been a chess fan, uh, I've seen uh, chess sets and him playing chess in some other videos, uh, I, I even uh, got um, uh, some footage, like an hour and a half of footage of him playing uh, the uh, the game of chess on uh, on the set of one of his videos, and I thought about making a video on that one, but it was uh, uh, they said that set, set the pieces up wrong. They switched the king and queen, and then uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't an actual game. But other than that, it was uh, quite fun. Uh, but here he faces Hikaru, and every game he faces Hikaru, they're playing uh, eight minutes blitz games. Uh, Hikaru takes off something of the board. So as you can see here, Hikaru is playing without both knights uh, and one of the pawns. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I guess they're going to continue doing this uh, until you know. Uh, I guess M Mr. Beast wins at least one of the games. Uh, so this is uh, one of the games I thought was the nicest one. And uh, let's uh, check out what happens here. Uh, so Jimmy with the white pieces opens with d4. Sorry about that. Uh, we have bishop to b7 by Hikaru. Now also uh, without the b7 pawn actually there, Hikaru can fianchetto the dark square bishop right away. But uh, make no mistake, this uh, position is already winning for Jimmy from the from the start. Uh, the engine is giving it over over a plus 10. If for example we had this position in a Leela versus Alpha Zero game, of course uh, you, uh, you would see a resignation here as uh, engines automatically resign when there's a plus 10 on the board. So knight to f3 by Jimmy and now e6 by Hikaru, preparing to bring the other bishop into the game. Bishop to g5 attacking Hikaru's queen and now f6. Hikaru brings it back. Of course you can't play something like bishop to e7 because uh, Hikaru being uh, down material from the start of the game, uh, he does not want to trade pieces. So he wants to complicate the position as much as possible and wait for Jimmy's mistake. So he has to go back, bishop to e3 and now bishop to e7. Hikaru ready to castle, he's gonna bring the rook in, try to uh, bust open the center. Uh, we have knight to c3 and here d5 by Hikaru. g3, Jimmy preparing to fianchetto his light square bishop and now Hikaru castles and bishop to g2. So everything uh, working out very nicely. Uh, rook to c8 by Hikaru and Jimmy now castles. So uh, no mistake so far uh, from Jimmy's side. He's still on plus 10 uh, on the evaluation bar by the engine. So he's doing well. And Hikaru strikes in the center with c5. We have d captures on c5. Bishop captures uh, and here you you can play a lot of moves, but the move Jimmy plays next is a very peculiar one He plays b4 uh, Probably to get Hikaru to capture it and to go something like rook to b1 to attack both of the bishops uh, But Hikaru after this b4 move he just captures on e3 and now uh, with the b4 move being played the knight on c3 is undefended so here we have bishop captures on e3, f captures, and Hikaru grabs the knight on c3. And okay, Hikaru's position now improved a little bit, uh, but uh, of course uh, white is still uh, winning in this position. Uh, so here, queen to d2, attacking Hikaru's rook, and Hikaru defends it. Queen to c8, and also now uh, threatening to pick up the c2 pawn. And here, uh, Jimmy doesn't even defend the pawn, rather he plays rook a to b1. He has a, he has a different plan. Hikaru captures the c2 pawn, and here, uh, Jimmy just brings the rook uh, closer one more square. Rook b to c1, and now he forces Hikaru to trade queens, and to go into a favorable endgame for Jimmy. So let's see what happens. Hikaru grabs the queen. Jimmy does the same. Uh, rook captures on c8. We have rook captures on e2 as the rook on d2 is under attack. So rook captures on e2. And now comes rook captures on f8 with check. We have king captures on f8. And now uh, here it's not all that easy to figure out uh, an exact plan for white. Yes, you are uh, up a piece, but black has a pretty massive center here. And uh, also black will probably very easily pick up uh, pick up these pawns. So probably your best bet is to get the knight into the game, threaten the e6 pawn, so you kind of force rook captures on e3, and then bring the rook over to control uh, the only open file on the board, which is the c file. Uh, however, uh, Jimmy goes for a3. Uh, he gets his pawn out of harm's way and also defends the b4 pawn. And now rook captures an e3. Hikaru grabs the e3 pawn, now attacking the a3 pawn, and Jimmy defends it, a4. 
Uh, we have e5 by Hikaru, uh, and now comes rook to e1. Jimmy wants to trade rooks, and Hikaru, of course, uh, goes uh, for the queenside pawns. We have rook to b3, and again, uh, b5, the strongest move recommended by the engine by Jimmy. Uh, we have rook to a3 by Hikaru going after that a4 pawn. And now there is no way to defend the a4 pawn. You now have to give it up and play something uh, something else. Probably rook to c1, getting the rook to the only open file on the board is the way to go. Uh, Jimmy on the other, ha other hand goes for rook to d1. He wants to move this knight and then put pressure on the d5 pawn. And also you will never be able to push this pawn because the bishop on b7 will be hanging. So here rook captures on a4. Uh, and now comes knight to e1. Now, uh, with a double attack on this d5 pawn here. And here, uh, Hikaru uh, kind of trolled Jimmy. He asked him, uh, what would happen if I played d4 here? And now, I don't know if uh, Jimmy figured out what to do, but he said you, you should kind of do it for educational purposes. But, of course, Hikaru didn't do it. He defended it with the e4 move. And uh, now, uh, what does white play here? Knight to c2. Jimmy now starts bringing the knight into the game. King e7, Hikaru starts bringing the king into the game, as you always should in an endgame, and now rook to b1. Also getting the knight into the game with knight to d4 uh, would be an excellent move since it's a dark square. The light square bishop will not be able to harass the knight. It's nicely defended. The b5 pawn is defended. So a very nice solid move. But we have rook to b1 and now he allows d4. So now those two are very, very dangerous pawns. We have b6 by Jimmy. He wants to bust open the b file and we have captures on b6. We have rook captures on b6 and now bishop back to a8. And now with the bishop on a8 being defended, uh, now black will definitely be able to push uh, a move like uh, e3. And here, uh, Jimmy went for bishop to f1. Again, the strongest move recommended by the engine. So although he made some mistakes, he is finding... Uh, some uh, viable ideas here. So bishop to f1, and uh, it was around this position. Uh, Jimmy was very low on time, I think uh, under two minutes. Uh, Hikaru gave him some time on the clock, uh, which is also an option uh, you, you can do, you, you know, if you want. Uh, sometimes if you're really enjoying the game and you don't want your opponent to lose on time, then you just give him more time. Uh, and here Hikaru played f5. Uh, d3 uh, is also an idea, just pushing that knight, starting to get that pawn as close as possible to the promotion square. Hikaru played f5, uh, now created a massive pawn center here, but Mr. Beast has a brilliant move here that uh, really makes it problematic for black to, to play this position. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find this move for Jimmy while I give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting bishop to b5. Uh, also, for those of you, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, sorry, <laughs> congratulations to everyone who found it. Uh, because it takes away these three squares uh, from the black rook. And now you have to move it away and this pawn uh, then falls. So, if the rook moves, for example, rook a2 attacks the knight, knight captures on d4. Uh, black will have a very, very difficult time playing this game because that, that d4 pawn and basically the, the entire black center was the... Was the trump card that uh, Hikaru was going to use to win this game. However, after this f5 move by Hikaru, uh, Mr. Beast went for rook to a6. He found a way to exchange rooks and he thought, okay, two pieces against one piece, even though you have a kind of a strong center here, I I'm going to take my chances there. So here Hikaru has to trade, rook captures on a6, bishop captures, and now d3, attacking that knight. Uh, we have knight to d4, and now comes g6, as the f5 pawn is under attack, Hikaru defends it, and now knight to b3. Here, uh, Beast knows that uh, these pawns are coming forward, and he's trying to figure out a way how to defend uh, against uh, those pawn pushes, and uh, he finds knight to b3. Of course, uh, you, should, you should always uh, start bringing your king into the game uh, in situations like these. He finds knight to b3, and now, of course, the d2 square is defended uh, by the knight, and if you push e3, then the d3 pawn falls, so for the moment, he stops the pawns. Uh, but Hikaru, of course, finds bishop to d5. He attacks one of the defenders of the d2 square, and now knight to d2, not all that impressive because you allow the pawn to be pushed forward with tempo. So here, king to f1, uh, beast decides to bring his king into the game now and give up the knight. Uh, you could also try something like knight to d4 to keep the knight into the game, but then the uh, the black king will simply kick it away. King f2, king to f5, and now uh, not all that much for you to do that there if king e3, then g5 is coming. 
and uh, well if you move the knight let's say knight to b5 then there are even ideas of bishop to c4 and black is completely winning for example knight c7 you're gonna ignore this and you're just gonna push this and now the pawn and the bishop prevented the king from uh, approaching even the pass pawn and uh, he carved with queen on the next move so here after bishop to d5 we have king to f1 uh, Jimmy decides to give up the knight on b3 to bring the king into the game and now of course Hikaru just grabs it. Knight, uh, bishop captures with king to e1 and bishop to c2 now. So all of a sudden uh, Hikaru who was down two pieces and the pawn is now uh, simply up, four, uh, up three pawns. So h4 and now comes king to f6. Hikaru now just has to bring the king into the game via the dark squares. g4 Hikaru of course advances the pawn. Bishop to c4. Uh, and uh, here Hikaru goes e3, so not much you can do against d2, he plays g5, check, king to e5, at this point uh, Hikaru is just bullying Jimmy, but Jimmy said that uh, even though he could resign, he's going to continue for the for the fun of it, as uh, uh, of course they, they were having a very good time, so here h5 by Jimmy, d2 with check, king to f1, and now d1 with queen, and now of course it's a forced mating too, uh, king to g2 with bishop to d5 with uh, bishop to e, uh, sorry wrong bishop bishop to e4 with check uh, king moves and now queen to h1 is checkmate as the white king has nowhere to go so really a wild game and uh, this was very very close a few moves uh, from jimmy you know prior to, to blundering those pieces uh, it seems that uh, the, there are just too many pieces for Jimmy to handle. So uh, as he started losing more pieces, he started uh, find, finding better moves. So we'll see. Uh, I wonder how many pieces can they take off the board. Because as you can see here, uh, they played uh, Hikaru played without the two knights and without the b7 pawn. Next game, uh, this was the next game they uh, played Hikaru with the, without the two knights, the b7 pawn and the h7 pawn. So I guess the, the bishops are coming off next and then... Uh, it would be fun to see how far Hikaru can push it, maybe, maybe even without all of the pieces and the queen, maybe just, uh, you know, with the pawns, but I, I think they'd be pushing it. But it would be fun to watch. So we'll see what they come up with uh, next, and can uh, Jimmy, uh, you know, figure out how to win a game uh, against Hikaru, as I, I think they will be playing more matches, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As you can see, Jimmy enjoyed it as well as he continued that game, even though he could have just resigned, but he continued for, for our enjoyment. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Weoyan Min, uh, Andreas Butz, uh, Detlef Passhaus, uh, Harry Lewin, and Curtis Fox for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and uh, whatever else happens in the chess world. Thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.